how to monetize your YouTube channel in just 21 days. I know this video was not clickbait. Today we're dissecting a channel that went from near nothing to fully monetized in just 21 days, which is bloody impressive because it takes the average channel 22 months just to get the first 1000 subs, let alone the dreaded 4K watch hours. <laughs> in fact, we're gonna be interrogating Lewis here who runs the channel I just mentioned to uncover exactly step-by-step -step what he did to get results so quickly. So then you can just steal his strategy and quickly monetize your own channel. And then you'll be able to afford rich people things like weird juices and YouTube premium. But first, there's a little secret you need to know. See, this is Lewis's channel and the first video he posted where he completes the entire Bunny Raiders game in one video, much to the dismay of Dilster69. Now that video got 8,000 views and then over the next few weeks Lewis posted another two videos, one that got 18k views and one that got 5k views and these videos ultimately led to this spike here where he ended up getting monetized in just 21 days. And now Lewis has multiple videos with over 100,000 views and has since picked up at least eight full-time girlfriends. But when I asked Lewis us about his seemingly overnight success he revealed a little secret i did originally start doing a gaming channel and it failed miserably so i made over 400 videos i reckon 350 of them are complete failures 350 failed videos now this video should teach you how to get monetized a whole lot quicker than that but i wanted to share that with you so you know lewis didn't just get lucky behind all of this is often this. So if you're currently stuck down here, what's the first step you need to take to jump up here and get monetized quickly? Well, interestingly, it's actually the same thing PewDiePie, Dream, and Laserbeam did when they started their channels. If we scroll through the earliest videos of these big creators and many more, often you'll pick up a pattern. Notice how the vast majority of their content falls into a very related category. Whether it's horror let's plays, Minecraft manhunts, or American egg hand challenges, at one stage in many of these big YouTubers' early development, they stuck to creating highly related content around the same topic. So in other words, if your videos are being ignored so hard you're starting to doubt your own existence, you should consider picking a specific niche. But I can already hear some bright cake on the candle in the comments section screeching, but Marcus, Lewis didn't pick a niche. He plays multiple games on his channel. But here's the thing, picking a niche is not just about sticking to one game on your channel or whatever. It's about creating content that is related enough that the kind of person who is attracted to one of your videos would also be interested in watching all of the other videos on your channel. So when you take a deeper look into Lewis's channel, you'll see that it isn't just a random Let's Play channel, nor is it a Far Cry specific or Bunny Raiders specific channel. Instead, Lewis's niche is about getting platinum trophies, which is like a thing you earn by completing all the achievements in a PlayStation game. And so the kind of viewer who'd be interested in Lewis's Far Cry 6 Platinum Journey would actually also be interested in his Modern Warfare Platinum Journey, and his Terminator Platinum Journey, and his Adventure Time Platinum Journey. Even though they're all different games, they're all related. They all have the common through line of a Platinum Journey. But let's bring this back to you because you're probably either a variety channel right now or you have a niche, but it's just not working for you. So how do you find and select a good niche that will help you get monetized as quickly as possible? Well, I asked Lewis to share his experiences. Making the video is the easy bit. That's the easiest bit. The hard part is the research. Can't skip it ever. Understanding the niche you're in is more important than picking the niche almost. If you're like, I love indie horror games. Like, great. What do you know about indie horror games as a niche? Do you just love the games and you just want to make videos on it? That's, I don't think that's enough. I think you need to understand how to market an indie horror game to someone. If you want to make indie horror games, but you don't like them, but you're doing it because it gets views, it shows on your videos. It shows in how you process everything. I think you need to be a fan of it to understand it, but you're not a fan unless you dive in. You've got to give it a go as well. Join the community almost. See if that's actually what you want to do or whether you just like the idea of it. I think the ideas trick people into doing the things more than actually the practicality of it. Do you really love completing games 100%? I do it for fun. So why not make a video out of it? Do you play horror games in your spare time? Yes, then I would, I would encourage that. But if you don't, if it's not a, a passion almost, I would probably stay clear of it and find something that you absolutely love doing in your spare time because then you're not working and it shows in the camera, shows in recording, editing, thumbnails. Now, always take the whole passion advice with a 
pinch of sliced bread. It's not a silver bullet for everything, but if you don't genuinely enjoy creating and making the videos that you post on your channel, at some point you're going to get bored of it. And viewers have a sixth sense for that kind of thing. They can tell. If you aren't enjoying creating your content, it'll lose some of that charm and you'll lose your viewers' attention. So then once Lewis picked his niche, the next thing he did was pretty damn exciting. Yep, it's more research. But don't leave the video just yet, because while I'm sure you would probably rather do a tequila enema than do more research at this point, just hear us out. I would do so much research into how people promote their videos, take notes of all their tags, how they describe stuff in their thumbnails. I would look at every piece of data that other people are doing that makes their video succeed on a regular basis, not on a one-off. And these channels I would look at from maybe like around the 10,000 subscriber mark. So they're a successful channel. That's a good channel. As long as they're getting consistent views as well. I think it's a lot harder to get consistent views on a channel than to just to make one blow up, which is why when mine did blow up, I was like, let's make sure this isn't a fluke. And I've done it again and again now. So I know it's not. I think if you can do the research on how people are marketing this and just alter it for your video or make it better, it, you know, it's not broken. That thumbnail that guy has created works. Whether it, you think it's bad or not, I think the thumbnails I was looking at were terrible, but they're getting a quarter of a million views to half a million views, some of them over a million. It's not a bad thumbnail then, it works. Take their thumbnail and, and make it better. Look at every detail they're using. See, it wasn't too bad. Essentially all you're doing is researching what's already working out there and finding the commonalities and then applying them to your own channel and Bob's your uncle. It's such a weird phrase. Plot twist, Bob's not your uncle just yet because you actually need to do something with the research you just gathered. Knowledge without execution is pretty useless. And the first thing you want to do with all this information is come up with good video ideas. Because making super clickable titles and thumbnails, which we'll talk about in a second, is highly reliant on the quality of your video idea. It doesn't matter how well executed your video is, if the concept or content behind it is intrinsically boring or generic, <coughs> Minecraft Let's Play, the YouTube algorithm will beat your ass worse than a misbehaving child in an ethnic household. But with that caveat aside, we can now move on to titles and thumbnails. And here's how Lewis thinks about it. I would say 99% of thumbnails suck. <laughs> I would say people are delusional oh. with what they think looks good. You just have to almost say, would I click this video? If the thumbnail is on its own without a title, would you click that video? You have to be honest with yourself and say yes or no. And if you go, mm, probably not, it's rubbish. Get rid of it, scrap it, bye. Don't be afraid to start completely again. For an example, I have a platinum in the middle, my face on one side and the face of the most recognizable character or thing in the game. That's the thumbnail premise of my videos, it's simple. But the way I extrapolate that is again, with the new Far Cry Primal game, I'm dressed up as a caveman. So most people just put their face and they're smiling, right? That's, that's the thumbnail. I'm like, okay, well, what's the title called? And it's like, this, this brutal platinum astounded me, something like that. I'm like, well, his face doesn't say it's brutal. That's the thing I notice. Having the concept for the video down first is quite important because you don't steer from the path. You know what you're making. There's nothing random floating in. Connect the thumbnail to the title. Have both ready before you've even made the video. Ask the people you're making content for, would you click this? There's no reason you can't. There's a community page on YouTube. Anything you can ask, there's, there's people out there that will give you their opinion, honest opinion as well. Especially if they don't know you, they'll tell you it sucks. <laughs> So, yeah, your best critics are often complete strangers because they don't care about your feelings and will very happily tell you when something absolutely sucks. Now we're 50% of the way through our journey to getting monetized. But if you don't do this next thing, all of the work you've done up until this point often will just completely go to waste. See, when it comes to titles and thumbnails, Lewis shared with me that he actually likes to go one step deeper and really try to identify the specific keywords or objects that will catch his viewers attention and really communicate to them what the video is about. And by keywords, he's not necessarily talking about SEO, he's talking about the specific words that really stand out and catch someone's attention first in your title. And if that seems vague at all, here's Lewis explaining it in more detail. The words that jump out on the page, if you look through YouTube, like I'll just, I'll do it on my other tab here. But if I just go on YouTube's homepage, immediately you can see this video here by Jake Baudino, another great content creator. Atomic Heart is almost great. Well, why is it almost? Perfect. That's perfect. That's a key word that stands out to me. He's written almost. This one here on the left, Atomic Heart is the new Hogwarts Legacy. Like this is where I'm talking about of that thumbnail. If you just saw that on its own, 
I have no idea what this means. It makes no sense. If you saw Jake Baldino's thumbnail on its own, you know it's about Atomic Heart for a start. It's got the character on the right, and you know it's him talking. You know he's going to be in the video because he's on the other side. Again, it's not a great thumbnail, but Jake Baldino owns Game Ranks. He's got 7 million subs. He, he's fine. <laughs> he's allowed to do this at this point. So here's, here's an older school one of Adam McDermott, who's a big guy in the platinum industry. You can see how he got the concept early on. He's got 64,000 views on this Bioshock 2 vert game. I don't think this thumbnail is particularly good, but, it tell, it, but, it's, it, but it's fine. Like it, tell, it does its job perfectly. It has the platinum. You know what it's about. You know it's about Bioshock 2, and you know it's got a Big Daddy on the front. That's fine. That on its own is, is perfect, but I can take that, and I could make the Big Daddy bigger. I could highlight the Big Daddy. I could put a new, fresher platinum trophy in it. I can take away the Bioshock 2 because people don't need to see it says Bioshock 2. That gives them too much information. It's already in the title. It's clearly on the character. So now you could add yourself into it or you could add something that sells a bit more into it. And those are the things I'm trying to suggest. Now, I think what's cool here is that even though a lot of these examples are from within your niche, almost all of these principles will apply to pretty much any channel. However, for the sake of being inventive and novel, how about we do give people an example of something that's completely outside your niche and how you would uh, market that, let's say a Minecraft Let's Play video. If you've got a Minecraft Let's Play, the first part of the title with everybody is Minecraft Let's Play, hashtag one. My whole title is nothing that jumps out to you. It's just generic as anything else. But people feel the need they need to write that in. If I was to do a Minecraft Let's Play, I would never include the words Minecraft Let's Play or like the number episode I'm on, ever. It would be something completely different because you could make that in the thumbnail. You could put a hashtag one in the thumb, whatever you're doing. You've got two marketing devices right there. As a title is so powerful and a thumbnail is just, it's a gift from the gods and YouTube because it gives someone the video, watch this. And they go, oh, what's that? And I think people skip the thumbnail and they make the video and go, right, let's get this out. Let's see how good my video is. But they haven't promoted the video correctly. Ferrari make an, a, a new car. They don't just wait by the door for people to walk in and buy it. They, they market it. It's out there to, so people know what to buy. And it's the same with content. People aren't throwing it out there for people to see. They're just hoping people walk through the door and see their video. And it doesn't work like that. You have to promote it in their face, especially to start with. When you're a big channel, people will then go, oh, has X and X made a video today? But no one does that to small channels. Something also really important to bear in mind here when it comes to your video marketing, as Lewis would call it, is eye-catching is relative. I often have students come to me and be like, hey, Marcus, is this title eye-catching? Is this thumbnail eye-catching? And the answer is always, well, it depends. Anyone can create an eye-catching title or thumbnail when their competition is just a blank background. But the real test is, can your title and thumbnail catch someone's eye when your video is right next to seven other videos on the YouTube homepage? Notice how that perspective shift changes the whole game. And to make things even more complicated, if the core content in your title or thumbnail doesn't line up with or match what it is that the viewers in your niche are actively searching for or interested in, it doesn't matter how well designed your title or thumbnail are, they're not gonna click. And that's why having great video ideas like we talked about earlier is so, so important. For example, I could create a video about the best way to edit YouTube videos, but if you're more interested in how to monetize your YouTube channel, you're probably not gonna click on my how to edit YouTube videos video, even if the title and thumbnail are great. And so the key here is to create your marketing, so your title and thumbnail, so that you have objects and keywords in your title and thumbnail that not only make you stand out from the other videos, the competition in your niche, but that also resonate with what it is the viewers in your niche are actively interested in or searching for. And to add to that point, if, if people aren't, if they're asking the question, is this eye catching? I'd say no. If you have to ask the question, does it catch your eye? That means you're not convinced it does. And if you're doing everything I said to previous, and I think you do as well, which is join the community, understand what people want. You shouldn't even need to ask if it's eye catching, to be honest. You should just go, this is what people want, which is even, even stronger. So you've decided on your niche, you've done some research, you've fixed your tiles and thumbnails, but we're still missing one thing. Prostitution. Wait, no, that's my resume. No, the final thing Lewis did was to actually focus on retaining his viewers after they clicked. But you probably know retention is super important. It's just retaining viewers is actually a lot easier said than done. So to help you stop your retention graphs from looking like Niagara Falls, I asked Lewis to share some of the best techniques he's discovered to do things like over 40% retention on an 18 minute video, which is pretty good when you consider it has over 100,000 views. Now it seems like a cheap trick and I'm not gonna, like, I'm gonna say it probably wrong. The first five minutes of the video, if your video is five minutes, then it's gonna be like the first 30 seconds. So it's all relative to how long the video is. But for me, it's the first five minutes. 
I need to keep your attention for five minutes strong. And with all videos, as soon as it hits that 30 second mark, I, I would assume, I think about 30% of the audience is gone. You're at 70% nearly always with my stuff. So I'm working with 70% for four and a half minutes. So in that four and a half minutes, I've got to keep that amount of people and it normally drops to around 45%. But once it hits the five minute mark, that 45 pretty much stays linear all the way to the end. If someone is willing to watch five minutes of your video, they must like it. Five minutes is not a short time just to sit there and watch something that you're not interested in. It's, it, that would feel like an eternity. The hooks and the in-your-face moments and something that really grabs you needs to be in that first five minutes. You can you need to keep attention throughout, don't get me wrong, but you can, you can really ease off. You can ease off the gas pedal after five minutes on my content. So relative, if you're making five-minute contents where you're just talking to the camera, for that first 30 seconds, you need to make sure you're delivering what they want to watch to keep them involved. And it needs to be exactly what the viewer is expecting from the video from the thumbnail the title you need to deliver in that first opening to keep them involved to keep that retention if you keep them involved they'll be curious to the end they will watch to the end the one thing that helps help my channel is subtitles so i'm not talking about like the ones you get automatically i'm talking i edit subtitles in for the first 30 seconds like wow and it's like wow is on the screen as i'm speaking anything to be clear punctual in people's face but not overwhelming it's it's still nice to watch those things help a lot it's it's hard to to have a correct answer almost for what nuggets would work but it definitely works with shorts which is where i got it from i thought shorts are so popular right now let's take the 30 seconds of a short and converse the first 30 seconds into my video into essentially a short and then the rest is a mainstream video and it keeps people on because some people watch to the end of a short then they flick but they always get pretty much to the end of a short you know it's not ever oh that was too long that short if they reach the end of the short which is my mainstream video there's more video so they just keep watching and that's that's kind of the way I'm I'm thinking about it. Now, I hope you found that awesome, but there is one last thing I want to share with you. If you don't want to talk about this, I know we can cut out afterwards, but I do know that you signed up for my YouTube course, Four Digit Challenge, at the beginning of your journey. And I wanted to hear your unbiased, unsponsored opinion on it. Do you think it really helped you on your journey to monetization? For someone that's new and trying to get started with YouTube, I think it's, and I'm not blind smoke up you here, I think <laughs> the amount of work research you've done to build this package for people is unbelievable. It, re it really is. If people think this is just your experience, it is. Plus every single person you educate yourself from to learn more about YouTube. Again, you have been there and done it. You've been on a slow building channel for years. You've found the cure to your channel and then gone, all right, let's do it with another channel. And it's worked and another channel and it's worked. Your whole package in general is, is built for someone that is either just starting off which is perfect, absolutely perfect. In 90 days, you will succeed. It's impossible if you don't, it is impossible. And if you don't, you haven't followed it. <laughs> that's that's the way I look at it. Anyone that doesn't, hasn't followed it correctly, they've, they've missed a step, which is all important. Your course is perfect. Honestly, the word is perfect for someone that is starting off, even intermediate, that just wants to improve, get better. Even if you've already got a base amount of subs, even if you've already monetized, I think it's even beneficial just to improve and tick every box you know you can be ticking so you know you're not missing anything i think it's i think it's truly valuable so massive thanks to lewis for coming on today i hope you found this video really valuable and by the way if you're thinking about signing up for something like my four digit challenge you should know that i actually have a money back guarantee right now so if you go through the challenge and implement what i tell you to implement but for some reason you don't have at least a thousand subscribers by the end of it i'll refund your entire investment and again if you want to dive deeper into all of the things we talked about here and monetize your channel as quickly as possible, feel free to sign up for my four digit challenge down below.